Hey, what's going on, fam? Welcome to the Creative Comeback Podcast. I am a lot of things in life. I am a husband, I am a father, I am a photographer, I'm a creative, and I am a filmmaker, and I also dabble in YouTube. I am super pumped that you are here listening to this podcast today, and I want to go ahead and tell you that I am obsessed with failure and how creatives overcome failure to find success on the other side of it. Now, if you're here listening today, I want to encourage you to join my Facebook group called The Creative Comeback as well, and there you will find more creatives sharing and exploring failure, creativity, and finding some level of success. This is what this podcast is all about. We are going to talk about a lot of different things in this podcast, but we are going to talk with so many different creatives from all across the world, sharing their life experiences, sharing where they fail, sharing what success means, and sharing what life is on the other side of creativity. I'm pumped that you're here today. We are going to get started with this episode right now. My name is Tim Riddick. I am a a wedding portrait photographer based out of the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, I'm just kind of excited to have my friend Eric on. Eric and I have known each other for several years, but I'm going to I don't even want to introduce Eric because if you're in this room, you should know Eric already. And if you haven't, I definitely want you to take the time to uh, definitely give him a follow on Clubhouse and definitely follow his Instagram. But this is inside the photographer's mind. It probably should have named it inside the creative's mind. But uh, really what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the business of creativity, Um, not necessarily the business end, but we're really going to get to know Eric a little bit more and we're going to dig into what makes him tick as a creative and i'm just really kind of pumped to have you here eric what uh, why don't you introduce the people who may not know you uh why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself uh man that's always the hardest thing to answer just cold like that um <laughs> okay here how about how about this one <laughs> like let me let me ask you this question what what would your wife describe what you do Oh, for the love of Pete, let's, can we go with somebody else, please? <laughs> Pick another muse. No, I would, my wife, describe what I do. Yeah. What, what are you talking like? about? Well, I guess you're talking about photography specifically. It could, no, it could be I, anything, I'm, dude. Doesn't it have, I mean, does have a, to be photography? Sure. I'm a very, very loud person typically <laughs> and have lots of opinions about lots of things, but I realize they're just mine. That's all. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'm a photographer. Uh, not necessarily. That's not my identity. That's not. Uh, that's not who and what I am. But it's something that I do. Something that I just enjoy, and that I'm able to do well enough to to make money doing it. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, more than anything, I'm, I'm. I think I'm. I would try. I would. I would introduce myself in the way that I would hope I would come across, and that's that. I'm a positive guy. I'm a high energy guy. And I try to add value to people's lives just through, um, through and an energy transference, I guess, you know, I'm not really into the woo or any of that kind of stuff, but yeah. I really think that I, I've, I've experienced an ability to transfer my enthusiasm about something to other people palpably. Um, and, and I've actually had a few people tell me, they're like, man, I just, there's nothing better than enjoying something that you enjoy with you. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's a strange superpower, I suppose. But, uh, but I think it, it certainly helps with being a wedding photographer. That's for sure. Yeah. I, yeah, I definitely totally agree. I have always have come to the conclusion that like when I'm in the best mood, I generally uh, photograph my best work. Um, there has been times yeah, yeah. where I have been like, uh, my wife has given me the business and before I've left to go photograph a wedding and mm-hmm. it showed, uh, yeah. in my work. And I think it, like being a super positive person, definitely a hundred percent helps with that. But, yeah. I'm, but I'm curious, Eric, what's like, I know we were just talking about like self-evaluation and, and growth in 2020. And I know we kind of missed out on that before I hit record, but I'm really <laughs> interested. We were talking about like, a, we, well, let me kind of go back for the people that are probably just joining this room or probably just hearing. Uh, I know that for a lot of people that 2020 was like a year that a lot of people just was like, I'm ready to just close this chapter on. 
um, yeah. and move on. Uh, for me personally, it was a year of tremendous growth. Um, yeah. But what about for you, brother? How was it? How was it for you? Well, well, and I mean, yeah, to intimate what I was saying earlier, I just, you know, I'm, I'm somebody that just takes, um, I try to look at challenges differently. Um, that's one of the things that informs my, my, my photography, I think, and certainly my creative mindset is just looking at challenges and, and, and trying to look at them in a way. So it's like when you come up with a struggle, when you come up with something that's, that you didn't plan on, you know, something that you're, you're not enjoying, you can, you can look at it. You can just, you can struggle. You can focus on the struggle and try to get past it. And you can focus on, it's like, what, you know, what can we do to get this over again, you know, get past this or, or but uh, anyway, I, I think I'm just, I realized very quickly that the best way to get past that is to look in yourself and, and, and deal with it, you know, and deal with that. So there's a lot of stuff that happened in 2020 that I would not have signed up for going in if you'd have told me, <laughs> uh, you know, what, what we were going to be dealing with, but but these are, but it's been profound. You know, I've learned a lot about myself. Uh, and yeah, yeah. I, moving forward into 2021, like I, I think I just, I became very comfortable. I'm resistant to those negative vibes. Like I just personally, just my nature is I, I don't, I don't dig it. I don't like it. I don't like any sort of just negativity in any way. It's just something I'm just like, Oh man, I'll just go in the other room. If somebody's talking shit about something, I'm just like, ah, I just, <laughs> it, it, it's not even that I don't do it. You know, sometimes I do it and you feed off different energy, right. From different times sure. of time. But I'm just, anytime, as, soon, as soon as I'm aware of it, I'm just like, Oh man, this is just not, I'm not about this man. Like I, I hate negative energy like that. And so one of the ways I become resistant to it is by like, you know, by dealing with it when it happens, because life's going to come, man, and life's going to happen. And there's nothing you can do about pandemics. And there's nothing you can do about your dad dying. And there's nothing you can do about all kinds of things. And it's going to happen, you know, and, and instead of trying to l build a life that excludes these negative things, build a self that is resistant to those things in the sense of like, you engage them, let them, you know, like really engage it and like feel the pain and be like, why am I struggling with this? What is the problem? And, you know, it's usually some imbalance that I have in that regard. And so then when I can deal with that, then I'm now I'm impervious to that thing. It can't bother me anymore. And it's not that I can't. In fact, it's the opposite. You get to a place where you can have a new relationship with this thing, whether it's a person that I'm struggling with or a situation. You can now look at the situation without the emotional baggage and without the emotional imbalance of just what emotions do to us they 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 it, it limits our critical thinking skills you know and so yeah. when i'm now able to just look at this without the emotional baggage or without you know some viewpoint that i am beholden to you know or some idea i can now just look at the situation and take from it what i want you know maybe learn from it or, or add something to my life if i want I think anyway i want 2021 to be just like that man like uh, you know i i don't think that i don't want more pandemic i don't want more stuff i don't want the world suffering more necessarily i just i'm i'm now i've watched a lot of i watched true detective again and it's my it's the greatest yeah, thing ever which, which, which season did you, what season did you season, season one it's season just one. season one it's the only good one and yeah, anyway it was good i thought you know season three wasn't no look i thought they were all good in their way yeah it was, just, it was unfair way. to the second and third season that number one came first that's all <laughs> oh dude um, i totally but, totally agree with you uh season one but, was like mind-blowingly good that's is literally the greatest thing ever made in my opinion but so so there's there's a scene where where rust says i will not avert my eyes they're t it's 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 a really heavy scene when he's yeah. showing the videotape to you know what i mean and and he just is like, dude, I will not avert my eyes. And that is just stuck with me, man. It is stuck with me. It's just, just every, I, I, cause I come up against these things, you know, and I'm just like, I will not avert my eyes. I'm going to look this dead in the eye because it's going to keep happening, man. Life is hard. Yeah. Life is hard. It is not easy. And, and I, I'm tired of pretending that it, that it is. I'm tired of pretending that, all oh, shit's going great, man. It's always, and, and I'm a, I'm a, honestly, I'm always a happy guy. I really am. I'm the happiest person, you know, without question, <laughs> but, but that comes at a cost, man. That yeah. comes at a cost uh, when you won't avert your eyes, you know? And anyway, so 2020, I feel like it's taught me that like I, I've had to just, cause we've been on top of each other, man. You can't get out of the house. You know, I, we had my daughter moved in with us. She's 22 with my 17 and 18 year old boys. We got a guy doing tattoos in the house. <laughs> Uh, we, uh, 
both my wife and I worked from home. Yeah. And my daughter brought her two 75 pound pit bulls with her. <laughs> so, <laughs> man, we were just so on top of each other, man. Yeah. And you, you can't, you know, you just don't, you can't, you don't have space to just be in a bad mood one day without affecting, infecting everybody else with it. Uh, you know, you, and so, yeah, we were just really forced to just deal with a lot of this stuff. And, and, Man, I just come out the other side. I'm so grateful for it, genuinely. Genuinely. So I'm I'm curious. So like I know with like a lot of people, a lot of photographers just in general, we've all had to like adapt to what 2020 yeah. brought us. Uh and I know you spent uh quite a bit of time in between. I think you were uh San Francisco and you're based out of Dallas, Texas. And you were yeah. doing a, uh, doing a bunch of stuff like so how did that traveling did that kind of put, really kind of put a a little thumb in the nose on your traveling? Uh, yeah, well, so so interestingly, in the past year or two, I brought my business home. So I was based at online. I mean, I've always lived in Dallas, but I was based online in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Um, that business model is tough to, it's just tough to, to maintain for the long haul. You, you have to be there in person so much more to really, you know, stay top front of mind with, with planners and venues and whatnot anyway. And uh, so, so in the end, uh, it honestly kind of dried up. And so I was like, look, man, I've been here in Dallas. I'm going to move my business here yeah. and start looking for work here, uh, establishing relationships here. Uh, and and int- the reason why I actually did that is because we're planning on moving to Colorado. Oh, shut <laughs> yeah. up. When, I didn't, I didn't when know Roman, that. Yeah, well, when Roman graduates uh, and, and sort of, you know, when they get sorted in their lives, we're not going to just, you know, you graduate and we're going to leave. But mm-hmm. so, so, so the plan was like, you know, it was like a five year plan a couple about a year and a half ago or so uh, to move there. So I'm establishing business here and I've been flying back and forth to, to Colorado, taking meetings and setting up business there because I wanted to have a business established there. But Dallas and Te- Dallas and Colorado have such a or Texas and Colorado have such a handshake deal anyway. They're like sister states, I suppose. Yeah. Um, Colorado is the destination for a lot of Texans. Uh, and so it's a natural fit business wise. So I've been building that and. The, look, and COVID wrecked that, man. I mean, because I mean, I wasn't able to go. Like I said, yeah. you know, I wasn't able to go take meetings. And um, but in the, in a similar fashion, you know, I've had to to change the way I do things and the way I connect and and, and focus more on calls and 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 Instagram and and connecting via mm-hmm. social media and things like this. You know, these are the only tools that I have. And finding an authentic way to connect with people, you know, like genuinely not, you know, I'm not selling anything. I'm not trying to get anything from them, but I realized that the only way this business is going to work is, 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 is when you realize that it's collaborative. I posted about this on Facebook the other day. Everything is collaborative, really. Any, any growth in any way is, 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 is a collaboration between myself and some entity from the outside. That's a collaboration. And so, I just start to realize, man, that, that that's that's how I need to build my business, man. Mm-hmm. It's just connecting people, being connected to people. Like I want, you know, you talk about, you know, oh, I forget what you were saying earlier, but it made me think about enjoying, you know, yeah, you do your best work when you're in a good mood. And yeah. Man, when you go to work and you enjoy the people that you're collaborating with, you enjoy these people. Yeah. You, you, I, you, I'm, I'm doing work with people that I like, people that are like-minded, um, people that feed off energy you know that i do back and forth you know just the, we, the way we would choose friends that kind of thing you know just a, just a, an attraction to people and i'm attracted to a lot of different kinds of people but, um but when when that's the case and and of course you're working with these talented brilliant people where you're professionals and you bring something specific and unique to this group man that is just when just all the magic really happens man like that's always the best word always yeah, i think that's that's what's like really unique so you and i have known each other for a while and it was like one of those things i was like i can't remember the first time we hung out but i think it was either photographing a wedding in dallas or i was in dallas for some reason yeah. I, I can't quite remember what exactly i was doing um but i was there and dude it was like we were just kind of communicating uh via facebook messenger or something like that you're like dude why don't you come over why don't you have dinner and i was like Oh my gosh. Like, this is like, yeah. I was like, I've got nothing else going on. I just got to figure out where you live. And (laughs) it was like, I think that really screams, um, out just about you in general. And I think that's the thing that's so unique is like when you are able to take like your online relationships with people and turn them into like real life friendships and real life relationships. And I think that is obviously 
the best. That's how I've grown my business. And it sounds like that's exactly what you've done as you're getting ready to kind of like move. It's like, just the approach that I'm taking, man. I, I want to work with people that I enjoy. I want to work with friends. You know, yeah. I, wanna, I, don't, I don't want it to feel like work when I'm at work. That That's that's how I stay creative. What, when Just for me, you know, the uh, being with people that let me be me yeah, and let me do the thing that I do and that they appreciate it and they see value in it and, and, they, and, and they want that from me as opposed to being with people that want what they think a photographer should be bringing or what they think, whatever. And it's not that they have a wrong thing. That's cool. That's great. It's just that I'm going to be the best that you're going to get the best of me. If, if, if they have that mindset, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I'm following exactly where you're And I will yeah. say that that was always like one of the things that, uh, just for me, like that I was like drawn so much, even from when I first started out, photographing weddings what i was like this is like so i've been shooting weddings for 11 years now so um it was like one of those things that your work just in general and your style was so drastically different like i I, like i would see an eric clausen image and be like okay yeah that's definitely uh, that's brilliant thank you man i appreciate that. that's high praise it is it is but but i mean i mean i'm serious and i we were i kind of we were kind of kicking around like what we were even going to talk about and i and i think that I know that your style is like super like unique and is super like even on your website, you know, it's like big and bold and beautiful. Like, and I think that mm-hmm. that is, um, what well, I just feel like a lot of photographers like really struggle with. And what I mean by yeah. that is like, I can look at somebody else's work, um, and I can see where it was inspired from. Do you know what I mean? Like, even if it's like, so like, um, like if you're a film photographer like me who I shoot primarily on film and I can tell when I look at another photographer's work that it's been depending upon who it is, that it is a, just a deviation from like Jose Villa. Uh, Sure. Not to say that that's bad. Like, no, I understand what you're saying. You know, but like when I see uh, an, an image, created by you it is clearly eric clausen and it doesn't seem to be influenced from anyone else so how did you kind of Fuck, figure man. out I, what your style I was just, oh man honestly you just made my day bro that's literally the nicest thing anybody's ever said about my work really <laughs> no that's, but i'm but i'm being dead serious i'm not blowing smoke I'll, look i mean honestly it, it's 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 part of my you know part of my and it's very intentional i think you know i i try to live a life that is uninfluenced by but not not a, not an influence. I think it's so much. It's more. It's more. It's more of a <clears throat> a chosen influence, right? Yeah. It's 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 it's. I've decided what I wanted to be, and I've decided what I'm going to look at, and I'm just whatever. Because I think I just reached a point where I, I started realizing how much influence other people had on me, right? Yeah. Just just on, on me being me, and and what I see and all of that. And so I just went, I went about the set about the work of asking those questions, right. About, about the, um, it's like, why, why am I this way? Or why am I that way? You know, and where did it come from? And so as, as I've done that, I think that my work has become less and less influenced by, you know, and, 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 and more, more specifically, me and 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 i think when you can remove the need for an influence uh, you know because that's what we're doing when we start work when we start photography you're just like oh you see that and you see that and you, just, you all you're doing is emulating shit that you've yeah. seen right and, uh and and that's that's cool uh, but but at a certain point it's like you said you know your work looks like that or it looks like that you know mm-hmm. and so as you said about my dog, I'm in the backyard with my dog. <laughs> no, it's, hey, all good. it's old and blind and you don't know what's going on, <laughs> just barking at the wind. Um, but as you as you set as you set to to remove those influences, you know, what's gonna be left is, you know, the way you really see. The way you see and, and the thing is, man, is everybody has a unique way of seeing. Everybody sees something their own way, right? Everybody yeah. has their own way of seeing things. And uh, I just think that so often, you know, because of the nature of the industry that we're in or whatever, and just that's the nature of people. We like to be liked, you know, you want yeah. to be part of a group. Uh, and and I think that the work that I've done is, again, I just, I'm resistant to that. I just, I'm like, I don't need to be a part of, I don't need anything. You know what I mean? I can exist on my own without anybody's opinion or about anybody's anything. 
I'm I've got not because I I don't I want that you know I mean I love people I'm an incredibly connected person but but I'm not I just realized I don't have anything to offer this group until I've got myself sorted right that that that's yeah. when I can then I can bring balance and and you know clarity to this situation and I like to think that that my work has has followed that path man and and honestly to be fair I hadn't even really considered that specific you know aspect of it before you you said that but 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 that resonates with me at a very 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 deep level of, of and and anyway it's very satisfactory to hear that because well, I, I think, think that yeah yeah I, it was just kind of like I think there are sometimes when, like, when you're doing like this kind of interview kind of type uh, situations with people, that there is um, uh, some like blowing smoke kind of situation. But I, dude, I've always have felt that way uh, just about your work. There was something even when you were going by uh, poser, there was uh, a something that was very unique uh, style, and I've seen just how like how your work has matured, like just over the years, and it's just gotten like. Dude, it's just like better. I'm even like looking at uh, just the image, like right when you go to ericlawson.com, like that first image, dude, is like nobody uh, else is doing that, dude. Like that work, <laughs> that, that work is it's it's so stunning uh, that it's like literally like like it's unlike it's a website i mean i know there are only a handful of sites that that are making websites for photographers and you can go out sure. and be unique and it's only but so different that you can make your website look versus somebody else but do like no one's yeah. no one's work speaks out like the way that this image speaks out to me and yeah. i think that like what was oh, the you. when you were kind of going from like even rebranding yourself from uh poser to just your name what was that what was that whole process like for you so just for what it's worth, that photo that's on the cover that was taken in 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 uh, um, in the doorway of a random apartment complex. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, like we were driving to this, like we were walking by, like there was this little court, this area that we were walking to that was all pretty and whatnot, lake area or court, whatever, had little trees around it and everything. But as we were walking, I looked to the left, and I was like, shit. And just in the doorway, because I saw the light. That's what mm -hmm. I saw. Like, I don't, I didn't, you know what I mean? It didn't matter. There was a, and so it's, anyway, just a total side, sidebar. So, so the, the transition from Poser to, to Eric Clausen was, was just one of, I think, just a in, it, individual growth. I think just sort of the standard um, maturing in, in your, in your, in life and in work. Uh, Poser, the, the whole point of Poser, the brand was, was, it was, it was to stand out. It was to be different, you know, it was to, to just get noticed essentially, you know, I was actually on the knot and, 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 you know, how they have like the first 50 pay, 50 photographers. These have like one little square, right? You have yeah. your little avatar and that's, and, and so I was like, man, I'm competing with 50 other people. How am I going to get them to click on my shit? So all I did was I put a barcode. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. I put a barcode up and the whole thing was be a poser and it was all branded, you know, like it was all about, you know, be part of the, this thing. And, yeah. and, you know, posing was something that everybody was doing, but at the time photojournalism was the buzzword, right? It was all yeah. photojournalism, photojournalism. And I mean, what I realized, man, I spent the first 10 minutes of every single client meeting that I had explaining to them that they didn't really want photojournalism. <laughs> 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 Typically, you know, I mean, I would just ask, and I would be, you know, I would, I would ask them what they really want. And I mean, see, see what, what you're talking about isn't really strict photojournalism, you know, like there's no, and, and so, so I would explain to them what I do and what I do. And so I would be like, look, it's poses aren't bad. It's just bad poses. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. so I'd get there and I tell them about it. And so I was like, man, poser, I pose, I'm posing. It's so fucking perfect. Cause everybody <laughs> out here is talking about how unposed they are anyway. And bro, it was, it was a smash hit. Like the, it, it went off. It was great, man. My, my um my cards were 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 like um clothing tags yeah uh, and that's where the barcode was on the back of you know <laughs> uh, and my phone number was the barcode bro it was the sickest branding i loved it yeah but 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 what but what happened was man it's just at a certain point it became less about selling myself and it became you know the work became more important to me you know and 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 as an artist i grew and was like man i I really want my name on my photos, yeah. you know, just became like, like poser was kind of like high school, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like wearing a ripped jeans and whatnot. And then, and then, 
Eric Clausen just felt like, you know, the real job growing up, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, 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 and like, this is, this is what I want to do. I want to, I want to, I want Eric Clausen to evolve, you know, not, not poser. Uh, and, and people still call me poser. Sometimes it's funny. <laughs> I, well, you know, what kind of reminded me was that I think you just posted uh, on social media. It was like a bunch of images from, was it WPPI? Like what? 2009 yeah. or something like that. Yeah, They even had the little poser. <laughs> that's, that's what, that's what kind of made yeah. me think about it. I was like, Oh, yeah. cause like, you know, the thing is, this is that like, not that I had forgotten about that, but it was just like, because as I've gotten to know you, I just know you as Eric and we communicate yeah. somewhat on sure. a frequent basis, uh, online. And it was just kind of like one of those things that I was like, Oh, I like, it was like something that was like kind of back in the back of my brain. But then I was like, Oh, I need to talk about that. Dude. And even before that, bro, I was paparazzi pictures. You, <laughs> did, you didn't even know about this I did, shit. I did not bro. know about that. <laughs> paparazzi pictures. Bro. It was, I was going to set the world on fire, dude. I was going to say, revelation revolutionize photography so what when i got into photography man i was not like grow up with a camera guy I, yeah i literally like shot for the first year with a, a video camera and just was pausing video like oh, like shut photos. Up. i didn't even know what the fuck i was doing man. <laughs> and so yeah so so what was i saying i forgot what track i was on even <laughs> completely lost my train of thought no it's all good you were talking about uh oh, paparazzi pictures yeah. yeah yeah so so i just so when i got into photography like i just got into photography because my wife's clients were like can you take photos of me and my family i'm just like dude no way man like i yeah. just take photos of like you in the car and shit you know like that's <laughs> yeah. weird but anyway so i just sort of got asked to do it and i was like okay and so then i just i, mean, I wasn't like research guy man i just am like all right how am i going to do this yeah and so i just i was like who's so i was like i'm gonna like go to the park and take photos of them at the park dude <laughs> this is gonna blow up and, and i was like the whole concept was like i'm a paparazzi and they feel like they're a star and all this shit right so paparazzi pictures and they ate it up man they ate it up it was so funny it was the worst branding of all time oh dude right. that's that is hilarious so when well when so the reason i changed honestly the reason the reason the change because i went from paparazzi pictures to poser the reason why is because people kept going to porn. <laughs> they kept on, they kept on, ended up on porn sites and because paparazzi, whatnot. And at that time, you know, anyway, nude pictures of so and so or whatever. Dude, that is that is. What, so when did you? When did you? What yeah. year was it that you first kind of started like shooting? Oh uh, six, I think, was when I bought my camera. Yeah, like I bought like a twenty D. And I was like, I'm going to do family photos or yeah. whatever, because that's just what you do. Uh, yeah. And I took my, I did my first wedding, became a wedding photographer the following year in 07. And Dude. then that was it. I, I, yeah, I just realized I hated shooting families. <laughs> yeah. I think you like I hated shooting families. I think you have to Cause be, I just like, I'm a storyteller, man. I'm, yeah, I'm like, I'm, you I'm wanna... giving you my perspective of what's happening. If you, if nothing's happening, shit man you know what i'm saying like I, anyway it just like that's just not what i was into the photography for you know what i'm saying yeah. like I, I i was shot for a year and so i was like i hate this why do i hate this i feel like i should be enjoying this and i don't enjoy it and and then i i, I went to a workshop the the, the anti-workshop was uh, alt f and uh the boutwells yeah uh, i went to their workshop and i was like fucking hell you can like be creative at a wedding. Okay. Like <clears throat> that's amazing. I'm in it. And I literally left there and I'm like, I am a wedding photographer. I hadn't even shot one yet. I was, just, <laughs> I was like, I'm a wedding photographer. That's it. Sorted. Got that settled. I went, think did like a bridal shoot of my wife downtown, you know, put on a, her old bridal dress and we went downtown McKinney, put that shit in a little, anyway, yeah, and that's Dude, how it started. That is, that's absolutely wild. Cause I, I was like, I was, <laughs> it's really weird how people enter the wedding market, right? Like, yeah. as, as a photographer, like it, everyone has like such a different, like, so earlier today, I don't know if you know who TJ Tendell is. He's another photographer based out of Canada. And yeah. he was like, dude, he was like, I didn't get into wedding photography because I loved it. He's like, I got into wedding photography because I was tired of sleeping in a van with nine guys. He was a uh, skateboard photographer. Sure. And he was like, I was just tired of sleeping in a van with nine other people 
photographing yeah. skateboard people skateboarding. He's like, yeah. that's how I kind of ended up in it. And I think that's that sounds the, amazing. Right? Yeah. Well, he's his thing. He's like, <laughs> I loved it. He's like, I loved it. He's like, I was living a dream of, yeah. of everything that I wanted to do. And it's like, man, I was like, that is just not something that you hear often. And it definitely, you don't hear people saying like, oh yeah, dude, I was shooting with a video camera and taking stills from, from, <laughs> from a video camera. That's how I, I, mean, that's, and that's yeah. how I got into this. That no, is, and I, I love weddings, dude. Like weddings are my personal work. Genuinely. Yeah. Like I, I literally, I literally love it. I love the energy. I love that everybody's like so pumped that to be there. And like, even if it's, I don't even care, you know, like you listen to toasts and it's like, these must be the greatest people on the face of the earth. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. How are there this many incredible people? They've never done anything wrong. <laughs> and, but I don't care. I don't care. I just feed off it. You know, I just, I just, there's, there's part of your brain you just sort of shut off. And I just like to believe the best of people. I like to just, <clears throat> cause you know, everybody's capable of bad. Everybody's capable of horrible shit. And yeah. everybody's capable of good shit, you know. I, you, you can you can look at people however you want, and you can have the you know what I'm saying. Like yeah. you don't have to hold somebody accountable to every flipping action and everything they do. You, you can just have the relationship with that person, you know, on that level. And if it starts to impact your life negatively, obviously you can change that. But like I got a like I got a I got a neighbor, and I'm outside, so I don't talk to you loud. Yeah, but I got a neighbor who just the nicest guy, man. He comes, he, he moves in and he like, I'm out there fixing the fence and he comes over and he's helpful and I suck at all that stuff. And he's yeah. like, Oh, let me help you. And he's like real helpful. I'm like, dude, thank you so much. And he's always helping around the house. Well, we found out like he, he's real open about, and evidently he's really into married men. Like oh, yeah. he just goes actively and like seeks out married men. And yeah. I'm just like, Oh, that's a really shitty thing, bro. Like, yeah, not, not like, not like everybody's into it, you know, not like, not like a, a thing where everybody signs on and they do the thing, but like behind their backs, you know, and I'm just like, ah, oh, shame, you know, yeah. but here's the thing. The point is, is I'm like, man, I don't need to know it. That's your business. You know what I'm saying? You, you have your house and you can handle, you got all your own shit to deal with, man. I like you like as yeah. an in the week, every interaction we've had has been a positive. It's been so, like yeah. That, Look, bro, I'm just going to have that relationship with you, man, until until that comes in. You know, like, I, I don't I, I'm not responsible for the world knowing what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Anyway, I, I forgot why I was even saying no, that. Again. No, 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 no. You're really good. Because I think that's the thing that's I think that's I, I'm very similar to like what you're saying is like I can take a relationship and put it in its box. Right. Like, sure. and just be like, hey, I'm really good friends with this person. I don't necessarily agree with everything that they're doing. You know, but it's sure. we can't and be friends. I, and there's and there's you know, and that there, that line moves. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's not like a hard and fast you know rule about every. It's and, and if different ideas mean different things. You know, especially in this climate that we're in. You know, somebody's exhibiting, uh, you know, so, rate like racism, or if they're exhibiting you know xenophobia or some of these things, like. I'm going to just not hang, you know what I'm saying? Oh, like, yeah. I'm just, I'm just not going to associate. And that's not because I don't wish well to the person. And I hope they don't figure shit out. I'm going to do my, but, but all of my interactions, if I'm going to interact with the person is going to be on, on that topic. I'm going to challenge them and I'm going to yeah. be like, Hey bro, that shit's not cool. You can't be like that. If, if I knew, depending on how I know the person, you know, obviously yeah. certainly I want to overstep, but I think that, these are just ideas and ideas change. You know, people are not the thing that they do that that isn't what they are or the thing that they think that isn't what makes up a person. I mean, that is technically what, you know, that's our interaction with the person, but we're all capable of bad ideas and blind spots. And I've had them. I literally, I, I had all the thoughts that, that these people are having at one point and I've completely, and I've changed. I sure. don't hold the views anymore. And I, I know where they're coming from and I understand a lot of it, but, so I'm just saying uh, people, people should be respected at all times, but ideas are fair game. Bad yeah. ideas are fair game. And I will absolutely challenge you. And, uh, but I'll do it in a respectful way. A hundred percent. You know, like I said, I respect you as a person and I know that that's not, I, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I think genuinely, like if you hear me out, bro, I think you can, I think you can come to this conclusion. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm, I'm coming at this from a balanced point of view, dude. I, I have no, I have no dog in the hunt here, man. I, I don't give a shit what you think or, you know what I'm saying? I don't care if you agree with me. Let's just talk about 
you know what I'm saying? Just uh, we can we can find a, a common ground in morality and just well-being and kindness. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we can find that common ground pretty easily. I think most people do sure. share morality, regardless of what they say or where they get it from. It, it all really means the same thing. Yeah, that's that's interesting that you that you would even say that. I mean, I think what you were saying and what I agree with is that we all have a line. Right. But it doesn't necessarily mean that that line um, doesn't move back and forth as we grow and mature. Because I think the thing is, is if someone would have held me accountable uh, at 19 or 18 to what I am now in my late 30s, uh, dude, I'm a totally different person literally than than what I was. I've grown and matured. And I feel like it's even the same way, even like with like being a, a photographer, right? Like no one's basing me off of the work that I did 10 years ago. Right. You know, they're basing me off of the last wedding I photographed. You know, who, you know who the, you know who the worst offender of that is ourselves. Oh, we tend to treat ourselves the way we were 10 years ago. We, we, we still think in these patterns, these past patterns, because every, everything that we are is, a, is, a, is an accumulation of the shit that's already happened. Right. Yeah. But we're constant. But, but someone like myself is constantly adding to that. I'm constantly changing. I'm, in, I'm actively trying to change. And so with that, my mindset has to change too, because I can't keep thinking like I did yesterday. And so you have to stay open to seeing things new way, reassessing constantly. And it, it, it becomes, and, and that's part of the, the creativity. It's part of where the creativity comes from is the constant reassessing a constant trying to put yourself in a, in a mindset where you can assess a situation without any being beholden to any idea, without your own opinion being in the way. Yeah. And just, just see what's fucking happening here, man. You know yeah. what I mean? What do I think about it genuinely? And you have to know yourself and you have to, anyway, but that, that's the creative life, man, is living a life of, of balance and living a life where you're not beholden to anything so that you can change and be changed. Yeah. And I think that's the thing that is like super unique um, just about you in general. And I'm going to say this uh, wholeheartedly uh, and mean it is that like, I think even from our conversations that we've had uh, sitting around a fire pit in your yeah. driveway and yeah. just spitballing and having these conversations that are going so all, much wine. Yeah. Yeah. So much wine. Yeah. Going so much wine. All, all, you had whiskey, bro. And you had did, way too much. I dude. know. I did have way too much. And I drove, <laughs> and I drove back to my hotel. That's a different story, but yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. But it, damn it. Yeah. It's like, it, but it's just like one of those things that I feel like, like I feel like you're constantly challenging even the people that you know to think yeah. differently, to grow, yeah. or to have a different thought process based upon the baseline of what they think. And I think when that comes into like the whole creative process is like constantly pushing yourself to just be different and think different. And you can see, I mean, obviously we were talking about, I don't know if the people who are in the room, cause I can't see them, but like when you were talking about like, Hey man, this is kind of how I started. And as, and as I decided to grow, I wanted to have my name on the stuff that I was creating. And I think that that is a, testament to just who you are as a person of someone who's constantly evolving someone who's constantly growing like what would be like a piece of advice that you would give to someone else that is like kind of struggling with like i I call this like uh for some people it's like a quarter life crisis when they're like they're jumping into photography and they don't know what they want to be and they're being like impacted by instagram and their favorite yeah. photographer. What like what piece of advice would you give to someone who's cu- just kind of like cutting their teeth? So, well, I don't know. I mean, it really just it, it would obviously depend on the individual and where they're at. Everybody has such a unique perspective, and they come at things for such different. You know, I mean, some advice would be great for some people and not for other people. I, I think the best advice I ever got, I can say this for me when I was getting into it, and I asked, you know. Uh, and it, it was from it was from somebody who knew me really well. And and he saw me trying to be a photographer, you know, like look at becoming a meme in a sense, you know, or like looking for what is this and what what works and, and how do I talk to the? And he, he said, man, just don't it's like never don't try to pretend to be something you're not. Yeah. And I just went. Oh, fuck, man, that's so strong, because the reality is, is. I need to come to terms with who I am, you know, and where my talents are and what my gifts are. And, you know, it turned into like the, I remember the first, the first, um, 
consultation I had with a was it for a South Asian wedding, Indian planner, Indian wedding. Um, if you know anything about that culture, it's it's incredibly traditional. Mm-hmm. It's very you know the, the it's family oriented. The parents have a lot of say in a lot of things, and and they hire just South Asian photographers. Pretty you know pretty, at this time that was that was just that's the way you go. They keep it you know in house, and uh, and so the bride told me she was like. Hey, look, just so you know, you, I'm going to hire you, but you have to talk to my parents. So <laughs> she sort of prepped me for the whole thing, <laughs> which I was very appreciative of. She let me know because I didn't, you know, I had no concept of what I was, you know, I didn't know the, 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 uh, you know, the culture. And, and, and uh, so, so when, when they sat down, you know, one of the questions and one of the things I was concerned about was I'd only been shooting for six months at this time. I'd only yeah. done, you know what I mean? A couple of weddings or whatever. And, and, uh, or not six months, a little bit longer, but you know, it wasn't, it wasn't that long. Basically when they were like, how long have you been shooting? Whatever I was going to say was not going to be very long. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, uh, I don't remember exactly how long it was. I can look to be more specific, but, but ultimately the way that I turned that into a positive was I was like, look, and I had photos that were up and around. I was like, look, Do you see the work here? I was like, that's all I know how to do. Okay. Yeah. I don't know how to do anything else. Um, photography is a skill like anything you could teach a monkey how to take a technically good photograph and come mm-hmm. up with the numbers i was like but but you can't teach that that yeah. i can't i just know how to do that and so the question you have to ask yourselves is do you want that if the answer is yes i'm your guy yeah, yeah. <laughs> i can do that and i mean look you know there's a more refined sales pitch than that i suppose but 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 that was the gist of it, and so I never I never looked at my inexperience as a as a negative. You know, I was yeah. just like, how is this a value? How can this help me? Uh, anyway, and I believed it when I said it. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> well, I Which think matters. well, I think that's the thing is like when you are like just i mean i mean you and i have been in the industry for a long. you've been in the industry a little bit longer than i have but it's been like kind of like one of those things where you're like man i i'm just i see so often i see so many people who are just like kind of carbon copies of someone else and and i think it's really like trying to find an identity and like i think even going back to i don't know if you still do this but like i remember you and i talking back maybe four or five years ago and we're just and you know we nine times out of ten our conversation has nothing to do with gear but for some reason on this day this conversation was talking we were talking about gear and you were like yeah dude i shoot both nikon and canon and yeah. i was like who does that <laughs> who shoots both? Because like at the time, there wasn't Sony, or maybe Sony was around. No, Sony when, wasn't even. Yeah, when, no, they and weren't even, maybe yeah. Fuji was kicking a couple of cameras down the down the can. But like, I mean, it was yeah, it was at the time. It was it was the, those were the only two. Really, you know, they were competing companies for sure. Yeah. So, what kind of madman shoots both Canon and Nikon this at the same man. time? Like, but like, well, what was the reasoning behind that? Like, why did you? Why did it you want to shoot simple. both? It's very It's very simple. I, I shot Canon forever, uh, and I'm friends with uh, Otto Schultz. Who yeah. we, we became very, very close friends and started shooting together a lot. And when I would shoot for him, he would just be like, "Jesus, bro, you gotta quit shooting Canon, man." He's like, <laughs> "Fuck, you're killing me." He's just like. I can't get a sharp image out of you. <laughs> he's, he's a, he's a pixel peeper guy right? Yeah. on D three X guy, you know, and like max resolution and max this and that, you know? And so, so he began to have an influence on me in that way. And I second shot a wedding where he just tossed me a D 800 and yeah. one click. It took one click. I was like, oh, fuck. I was like, <laughs> Oh my God. I literally got like a quarter chub. I was like, gee, yeah that's amazing wow i was so blown away just by the by what i was seeing just the sharpness of it like oh that's what a sharp image looks like i just had never seen one (laughs) yeah (laughs) and so so i so i started shooting that well what i realized very quickly was that there was a trade-off for that and and that was uh what i didn't know was how 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 beautifully the the canon rendered backlit and because of the flaw because of how unsharp it was, it just the gradient from back to front is just magic. It's magic, yeah. like the, the 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 and and the the warmth with that sunlight. Anyway, so I I kept the Canon on for two things: one, for backlit portraits, 
and for uh, reception coverage because I just didn't own because I didn't want to buy another 24 mil. <laughs> yeah. I already, I, all I use is a speed light and a 24, so I just pulled a 24 back. Um, I put it at like 7.1, and, I, you know, I'm not even looking through the camera mostly. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's kind of how I felt. Like, So I bebopped around, and I shot Fuji for a while and Sony, and, and I always came back to what – Canon could do really I came back for one lens and that was a 51 2 I like yeah. I felt like everything else that I was searching for was like built in that lens that's such a lovely lovely lens yeah. I shot I shot 85 percent of everything pre 2010 on that on that no probably pre 2012 on yeah. that lens yeah, like, dude, yeah. it's such a, such a great uh, – it was just a great piece of glass for me. I never mm -hmm. really had the problems with uh, with a lot of people that they had with that lens, but I, I'm always – Yeah, I, me too. It was, it, was, it was notoriously bad for, like, back focus or mm -hmm. whatever. Everybody complained about it. I'm like, bro, you guys are using it wrong, man. I don't know what the fuck that is. That shit is banging. <laughs> yeah, dude, everything everything I took – so I, I felt like, like I was going to all of these different camera companies searching for the thing that I had already had. I never got yeah. rid of the lens. It was just sitting on a shelf. And yeah. I just, just kind of was like, so that lens to me was just such a unique uh, way of how I saw it. And like now I feel like what has ended up happening, I, like I'm not a pixel peeper. I don't uh, really, I'm not like super crazy about image sharpness or anything like that, about all the technical things. But like yeah. I feel like uh, they, what they've done with a lot of these newer lenses is they've perfected them so much. Yeah. Sure. But there's no character in them anymore. Yeah, you. I mean, I saw you comment somewhere that, and I don't know. I don't know how much I agree. I think, sure, maybe. I I, I like the way that they draw still. You know, like I'm gonna. I'll use like the that Sony the 135 is it the 1.8 or whatever. Yeah. Like the real. Jesus, man. Go shoot that at 1.8. Oh, nice backlit, swirly ass photo, Boca. Tell me yeah. that shit has enough character. Sorry, well, I, that, no, no, no. And, and because you get all the contrast, there's so much more there. So, many, so much color, and like the old lenses just didn't have it. Yeah, I know those old lenses. Like there was the, I think there was like a Sigma, like 105, 1.8 or something like that. That is like a super dope lens. But like mm -hmm. it just was never something. I, I just found myself always coming back to that same lens. But this is well. Yeah, this is something com a little off topic, and I, I'm just curious. Right. Like, what's your favorite thing about photography? Like, why photography? Out of all the things you could do, uh, you know, I, it's hard to put a finger on uh, words to what my favorite thing is. I, I think for me, it's a it's comfort. I find I find it to be the place I'm the most comfortable behind the lens. Um, I'm able to completely I don't know, even know what to say but uh, so in the past in, in the last year last two years my father died and uh, it was sudden like he, he he was like he was going he was 70 he's going in for his uh, he was feeling bad hadn't really hadn't had ap appetite and he's always had pains and I mean he's honestly he'd been breaking down like his whole body mm -hmm. he was on a scooter and whatnot but but he went in for a checkup and they told him he had pancreatic cancer and he had like seven days to live or something and like Literally, like while he was in the hospital waiting for the results, he had a stroke. So then he was bedridden for the last like three days of his life. Went, oh, he left there, went home and basically to hospice and died. So not trying to bring the room down, but but that that's so just so you know, sort of where my my mind was, it was like out of nowhere. And I, I and a little bit about me, I've never known a person that I knew well that, uh, to die. I've never known anybody that died. Mm -hmm. Um prior to this. And so what I found, and I was incredibly grateful for this opportunity was, um, and I asked the people that were in the room, but I, I asked if they wouldn't mind if I shot, if I, if I took photos, uh, and they were all, they were all gracious and, and allowed me to. And what I found was that, that was, that, that was the easiest place to be at for whatever reason, like all the stuff that was going on, I didn't really know how or what, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I mean, people don't, you know, it's fine. I, I had no context for it. So it was just like, whoa, you know, a lot of that. And, and I was able to, to just be behind the lens and sort of view it there, you know, like comfortably in a place of comfort. Uh, 
and I, I shot the whole thing all the way through through when he died the moment that he died and and I have all those photos I haven't even looked at them man honestly I haven't even looked at them uh I just I downloaded them so that I could to have them but but uh but I think I think that was one of the things that I took away from that was just how grateful I am for photography um just on a personal level not not because of anything that I'm actually producing or any you know any photo that I ever take necessarily but um I'm just grateful for my relationship with the art with with that medium or whatever dude that's uh I it's kind of weird to say I love that answer but I think it's uh-huh. kind of just says more about you as a person like I mean I, everyone answers that question slightly differently and I don't ask it in every interview and I'm always mm. um I love the fact that you know a lot of people or at least what you see online and I you know is a lot of people like oh I you know I love photography you know because I love love or, you know, or not, not, sure. that, not that that's a bad thing or not. It isn't, uh, no one's answers wrong. No, of course not. Man. You know, no, but I, I love the fact that it can get down to like a, a more personal level, right? Like I think we interact with things that we do for a living or things that we enjoy doing, um, because it is a place of comfort because it is something that we have, uh, inside of us that screams like, Hey, I just, I need to take a photograph. I, I don't know why I need to take the photograph, but this is the, this is what I need to do right now. Um, and it also, it's like one of those things where it, it documents our lives. It's more, so much more than just what we do for clients and what we do for a living or to earn a live, to earn money for yeah. our families or whatever. It's so much more than that. I just kind of, I love that, uh, yeah. just that answer just in general. Yeah, I love well, that. I do. I love that. That that's, you know, if, like the photo. Like that is me in the photo. You know, it's mm-hmm. like as as the photographer in the family. Obviously, you know, you're you're never in any of the photos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, you're never in any of the photos. Always taking family. My kids and my wife are stunners. All of them, just gorgeous people. And so I love taking photos of them all the time. Yeah. And then she's always just like, man, you're never in any of the photos. I'm like, man, yes, I am. Like. Yeah. Like that's, that's literally, you get to, you're seeing what I see. I can't, it's so much more valuable for me to, to have that, to have a record of that than it is for there to be a bunch of photos of me personally. Yeah. Dude, I love that. So let me ask you this. Let me ask you in the reverse. What's your, <laughs> what's your least favorite thing about photography? Bridesmaids and groomsmen shots. <laughs> 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 literally the bane of my existence <laughs> fuck i can't stand it it's not it's i don't know it's not like it just it's it stresses it's one of those things i have not dealt with man it's just a bottom line it, i have not dealt with that there's a discomfort level that i have with it i don't know why but i always get nervous i always feel incredibly uncreative uh it's just one of those and 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 everybody up there has an opinion and they've all, you know, and like, these are like the core people, you know what I mean? And so they're going to be like the ones that are like, Oh, we want to do that one fun, this or that, you know? And, and like, these is, uh, I'm just nervous that that's what's, I don't know. I just don't like it. If, if, if I, anyway, <laughs> I, I emote, I have a very strong emotional reaction to it, which like I said, tells me that I haven't dealt with something. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's fun. That's, that is, that's hilarious. Cause I feel like, yeah, definitely during the, the, group photos everyone's like oh it would be really great if we just picked the bride up and all the groomsmen held her and i was like please stop that yeah can but, we, can but we... interestingly i do i love the family photos i love oh, dude, the i love family photo. photographs that's as well my favorite i love it man get everybody up there and i feel and it's a very creative process for me i like putting all the textures together and mm-hmm. i love it and i love interacting with mom and grandpa and making fun of cousin joe and all that like <laughs> it's, man i'm at right at home yeah but get a group of no nah, man when it, it's it's the i think honestly as, as i'm sitting here talking about it i think there's something from my childhood to be totally honest with you i i was a really awkward kid i was inc- yeah. i was an incredibly late bloomer like i i th- i always thought like i think always very intense and very you know high energy but i was i had no social cues <laughs> i didn't <laughs> understand how people interacted and nor and then stayed friends and all this stuff like i was just learning and 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 
and so I was really alone a lot, right? I mean, I was an only child, basically. Yeah. I mean, I have a sister, but she's like six years older than me, and she moved out when I was a kid, real young. And so I developed it by myself. My mom worked at night. My dad, my ste- my stepdad, uh, he was a great guy, but he wasn't really, you know, like, yeah. anyway, he did his best, but he wasn't, like, emotionally really there for me at all in any way. And so I did a lot of that just development on my own. Um, uh, and so, but but junior high, bro. Junior high, there is a special circle of hell <laughs> for for ju- for junior high kids. They are the meanest, yeah. most horrible creatures in existence. <laughs> and I would have been one if I knew what the fuck I was doing. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not saying that I was above it. I just was the one. I was the source of a lot of their. I got picked on so bad, dude. I had a face full of acne, literally. Yeah. Like I turned 13, and I mean, it just went rabbit on my face i was i was loud and had really i had opinions and i'd stick my foot in my mouth and i was it would you know and kids would anyway i was small i was really short i grew a lot like in like high school and so i was like really small so man i would get picked on anyway so i just struggled in social situations i struggled with my peers with i struggled in these groups and cliques and and it was it was just a source of such such agony for me like genuinely like it was horrible now look i had sports i had baseball cards and i had sports and i just i was very content and very happy because they consumed me i mean you know me on that level you know the things that the way that i engage sports and and that got me through a lot of that stuff without question. But I think, I think there's just some of that trauma, man, you know, just some of that trauma left over with, with, because they're, they're always the same age, right? They're always sort of, it's always, it's this click. It's just this big click of friends. And I'm like, I feel like an outsider. Yeah. It, it's very difficult for me to feel comfortable in that situation. I'm, I mean, honestly, I, I think there may be a little bit of something to do with that. Yeah, I think you just talked. You just talked it out. <laughs> well, <laughs> talked that's it how out. I do things. <laughs> talked it out on mic there. It, yeah, it, I, it's really. It, gosh, it's like so weird about how much we bring into uh, situations that that we come into. It's like, like that's probably it's not my favorite part of the day either. <laughs> um, it's just because I, it's the time that generally it's the time that a lot of people try to. Uh, convince me to take photographs that I don't want to take. Right. Yeah. And, sure. but dude, like, uh, gosh, dude, I live for family photos. Like, yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, I, I lots of fun. There are times where there are some times where I'm like, okay, we just, we've got to stop this because I'm running out of light, but it's like a, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, to be, to be fair, I'm usually on a pretty, pretty, a pretty quick time frame there for that. I enjoy it, but it is standing in the way of the portraits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the thing. So, that's, that's the so that's the unique thing. It's like I even try to go like uh, in 2018. I just kind of had this like epiphany, like kind of thing, and I was like, man, I am going to try and take a headshot of every person that is at this wedding. And I like, yeah. and I started doing that, dude. And I started yeah. selling eight by 10 portraits like gangbusters like but you know man th- i think the thing for me and that's cool yeah you know, honestly man i've never sold much you know on that end uh i give away give it all away and let people you know print the stuff for themselves anyway but but i but i love the idea of taking everybody at that wedding getting everybody in front of the camera and mm-hmm. taking a picture of everybody because because now i've seen that person you know yeah. like there is that that interaction there is that collaboration you know like well, with and- me and you know, you, you know that I saw this person, the bride and the groom. They know that I saw this person and I took that photo. Even if it's my second photographer or whatever, I, 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 I'm super into the portrait. And I'm really, really wanting to do more of it. Uh, like, And I mean just like an actual picture of a person, you know? Like yeah. where, where you, you see them and you take the photo of how you see them or, or the person that they let you see. Uh, I'm just super, super, super getting into that. AD, um, you know, AD, yeah, 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 AD. Yeah. yeah, he, he, he got me into this, man. He, he really got me slowing down and focusing more on, on that exchange and, and that side of it. Um, and man, I just really value that. You know, the thing, this is kind of like something that I learned over the last few years. And it's like, I think sometimes as photographers who photograph weddings and I mean we photograph a lot of other things besides just weddings but just as photographers who photograph weddings is like our brains and I don't know if this is because this is something that we've been told we concentrate on the old people generally at a wedding which is not which I'm saying is important we should do that Mm -hmm. um 
dude, I have photographed, I photographed this wedding, uh, in 2017 where, uh, the bride literally two days after her wedding, maybe it was three days after her wedding, got hit by a car and passed away. Yeah. Shame. Yeah. And it was just one of those things, which just absolutely tore me up. And it was like that exchange that kind of happened was like, it was, you didn't even say exchange. It was like that situation happening and being yeah. like, you know what? I need to concentrate on everyone at a wedding because we're yeah. all, we, you never know when our number is going to be called. Right. Sure. So it's like, if I can, and it's, it's twofold, right? It's, it's both and not either or. And what I mean by that is that like, yes, I can find time in the day to make sure that I interact with people. Cause it, it can also be a personal gain. The person now knows that I've taken the time to chat with one individual. Like, hey, can I just take your portrait? Even if it's like a 25, 30 second exchange. Um, but like now, like they've like, oh, I remember that photographer who took me out to take a quick portrait. Yeah. You know, or yeah, I, mean, I mean, goodness. And if you want to talk from a business standpoint, man, that, that's that interaction is gold for any future person that they know getting married. I mean, it's just an opportunity to connect with somebody. And anyway. Yeah, dude, a hundred percent. Yeah. So that's kind of like just one of those things where, uh, I didn't know AD did that, but like, that is a, um, it is something that is very much a part of my day. I used to be like, man, I used to be like, oh man, I can't wait to sit down. And you know, that was just my, my mantra. It's like, yeah, I'm for sure. I'm working until dinner until I can sit down, yeah. you know? Yeah. And yeah, that's that, true. Man. And I, the AD, I don't know about how, 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 how many people, I don't know about AD isn't, he doesn't implement it at the weddings as much. And maybe he does. I don't know. I just mean, I wasn't speaking on his behalf. What, what he, I, I taught at a, at a workshop in Florida with him and we spent the week together and that, he he i just was watching him he was telling me about what he wanted he was wanting to take portraits of just people and it just that was how he spent his free time it was just he would have he would be talking to a person he's like can i take your picture and they're like oh and it's like oh okay and so they kind of and it's it's fascinating to watch the interaction man and watch mm-hmm. somebody prepare to get their photo taken yeah and it's like no man i'm trying to and it's like i want to negotiate that right i want to, i want you to don't do don't do that don't prepare stop it you know and so it's that it's that process that i'm interested in you know i want to, i want to i want to find a way to people to let people to have people let me take their photograph without them preparing at all yeah um, because it's, it's it is that kind of like really weird thing that we have a side or we're preparing we're not caught off guard in the sense of oh this person wants to take my photograph it's one of the but things it's very I- carnal i think it's a car at least this is instinctual man i don't think people can turn that off any more than you know but but I, I think that's but that's the point right is like i'm trying to constantly i'm always trying to de-escalate i'm always trying to 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 have intimacy i'm trying to connect with people and the best way to do that is to let your guard down, you know, and, and, and it's, it's, that's dangerous ground for a lot of people. You know, it's very, very, it's difficult. And if, if you, it, I just think it, it, you need to be delicate with it and treat it with intent. And I think if you can, if you can, if you can give people the benefit of the doubt actively and in such a way that it's palpable that they know it, then I don't, that they, they don't, they don't want to, change for the for the camera they love people would love to show themselves i think yeah. people like themselves you know it's just this instinctive it's instinctive you know i'm gonna take your photo okay and then you just you shift you move you you t- you, you know I mean? you do something you prepare you know and that person that, that that i was talking to is now gone in a sense you know the, the mind the stories are that you're thinking or your brain is now in a different place um and and I think people can get to that place, you know, I re- really, they can. And the, and anyway, that's the work I can do prior to that engagement, you know, is, is get myself as, as make, make myself into the, the, do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I want people to, re- to, to know that like, I'm like, man, you can be whoever you want, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have no fucking judgments at all about who you are. About what you think anything they're all it's all your opinion it's all it's all anybody has man and you're entitled to it you have a right to think the way you think and even if i disagree man it doesn't matter like that's what i'm trying to tell you like you can be you please it's the best thing you can offer me is yeah. to just be yourself it's the best thing i can offer you is the is is the freedom to do so uh and, and i think under those circumstances 
you can get some really, really, really interesting portraits. Uh, I mean, I try to treat my clients the same way, obviously, under any circumstance. I try to try and treat everybody. I mean, that's how I think I approach it. That's how you get good at it. It's a skill that you learn. It's empathy. Empathy is a skill, literally. Yeah, that's 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 pretty awesome, dude. I I I really love that. I I have kind of two other questions that I want to ask you now, and this one is. Um, what piece of advice or wisdom would you want to pass on to like your great, great grandchildren? Like what is something that you want your kids to say about Mm -hmm. you? This is what, this is what Eric used to say. Sorry. I'm getting a call. I'm getting a call. We're we're running over time. I have a two, two o'clock. Oh no, you're good. Uh, Still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, let me give me one sec. I'm gonna try and text this. <laughs> <laughs> You're all good, dude. Oh my god, autocorrect is killing me. Dude, join the fan club, dude. Uh okay. Okay, so sorry, back. Um advice to my grandson great grandson whatever yeah yeah what what what, um, what what piece of advice would you want to give that person geez i guess it would depend on how old they were when they're getting the advice really um yeah i mean you know no i have no advice <laughs> i really don't man i really don't i mean the, i think question everything man like actively question everything. I, I don't know if that's good advice or bad advice, but man, and it, it's it's so different for everybody, but I just, I've seen, the thing that I've tried to remove the most actively in my life has been influences of other people, whether well-intended, whether mal-intended, all of them, it didn't matter because none of them, I, I, I didn't give anybody permission at any point in time to, to, to do the thing, to say things, to act in a certain way, you know what I'm saying? And so now yeah. as an adult, I can choose what I participate in and what, which way that I think and what I think, you know, and all that. And I mean, obviously those things have influences on us, but it, I've found that as I actively engage, that my opinions do change about those things. You know, that as the more balanced I am and the less I need to feel a certain way about anything, the more I'm able to choose for myself. And so I've found that to be the most fulfilling process and journey that, that, that this life has to offer um the the one of, of just of self-discovery and and of and of just the pursuit of balance the pursuit of a, a lack of a point of view and so yeah i I'd, I'd probably need to write like a letter or a short story maybe <laughs> I can get them, like an advice because i mean really i think that look i raise my kids and, and and the way that i raise my kids is it is to actively use every bit of, of, of experience that I have in this world as, and, and just let them know that they have the right and they have the ability to form their own opinions about shit, that there's not a right and a wrong, not a wrong way to do anything. You can determine it for yourself. I have experience. If you want to do this thing here, I did that thing. This is what it looks like. It's, I'm not the only person that ever did that thing and a million other people have done it and they've had different experiences, but this is the only thing I got. I got this, you know what I mean? And so yeah. I can say, this is what happened for me, but I don't even know if I have no idea if that's going to happen to you. No concept of what it's going to, you know what I mean? So yeah. I would just hope you'd use this as perspective and just some added information so that as you learn to make those decisions, as you decide for yourself, whether you want to do this or not do this, uh, you understand and that you can make a, you know, make your own, make your own decisions. Uh, we we live in a culture that where parents think they own their kids and that they have some obligation to tell them what's right and what's wrong. And I could not disagree more. Mm. I absolutely, I, at my, I will die disagreeing with that because I don't have any fucking concept of what makes that person, that person I'm not in their head. And I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Jesus, man. The thing, the secret that was told that I figured out not that long ago, everybody's making this shit up. <laughs> Everybody. 
nobody knows what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. And so who the hell am I to give advice to somebody is all I'm saying, really. Like, man, uh, you know, the only thing I have is my experience. It's all I have. And as long as you know that that means nothing, you know, outside of what you want it to mean, then I think you'll be okay. You know, I think I just want them to have their own point of view. Think for yourself, you know, you don't be beholden to an idea. Don't be beholden to ideas. Dogma, avoid dogma. Maybe that would be my advice. <laughs> Dude, I love, I love listening to you like talk things out. Like, as you, as you... <laughs> yeah. that's, well, look, that's what I do. It's one of those things. I, I, look, that child that spent a lot of time alone, you know what I mean? I, I had to entertain myself. I talked to myself a lot. And I honestly, that's how I process shit is verbally. Um, very much so. Very much so. Awesome. Eric, it gets, you... Things will get rattled around up there if you don't get them out. I don't know. In my head, I, mean, I have ADD to the max. <laughs> and my brain is every which way but loose. So the... <laughs> <laughs> for real dude, dude i know you get a two o'clock or three yeah. o'clock for me but dude i just want to say thank you so much for taking time to kind of chat with me man and hosting it's this my birthday today. bro I was, birthday. I was getting ready to say that it's also yeah. your birthday dude so right. i want to wish you a happy birthday <laughs> uh 45 so, how, how old are you 40, 45 45 dude old 40 you're not that old but you yes, are I you am. are old though well yeah <laughs> there you go <laughs> you're not that old <laughs> Fair enough. Hey, man. I'll go ahead and leave that on that, man. Happy birthday, yep. brother. I hope yeah, you enjoy man. your day. And uh, Bro, thanks for doing this. I really appreciate it, man. And genuinely, again, I, I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for the things that you said earlier. That was, that was incredibly kind of you. Dude, I'm in, I'm in every word, brother. I'm in every word. All right, man. I'll let you go, man. Hey, okay, guys. Buddy. Thank you so much Great for listening time. to this room, guys. I'm going to go ahead and end the room. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time when we do another one of these. Take care.